Welcome to today's 3D print. Today we're going to talk about 3D printing basics and motion systems and what the difference is between a motion system and a guidance system on the 3D printer and why you don't want them coupled. So here is a 3D printer. Now a 3D printer has three motion systems and three guidance systems because you have three axes. Uh, technically there is a fourth but that's for the extrusion we're not going to worry about that so this rail is your guidance system it guides this bed back and forth you want this to be rigid this belt drive here is your motion system you want this to be soft you don't want it to be rigid you have the same thing here this is your guidance this is your motion now the problem comes when we talk about the z-axis because the z-axis they're both rigid so this lead screw is your motion system and this rail is your guidance system and this is rigid and that's where this little piece here becomes important and where the installation of this piece down here becomes important you can see on here I even had to put a shim in mine because it was not aligned correctly so let's talk about that so on a 3D printer, you have those two systems in play, working together. And a lot of the times you'll see me tell people, well, you don't want to restrain your lead screw. You don't want to capture the end of the lead screw and restrain it. Capturing it's okay, as long as the lead screw can still wiggle around a little bit. So wait a minute, isn't this a machine engineering component? Don't you want everything tight and rigid? Kind of. First, there's a very big difference between a $150 to $1,000 mass-produced machine and a $20 to $100,000 engineered, highly developed machined component that is miked out to certain specifications. Um, the closer you get to that kind of a quality of machine, the more money you're going to pay. Take out and take a look what a Railcore costs or a Creados costs. And that's still what I would consider consumer level. We'd call, I'd, we'd call that hobbyist grade prosumer. Um, you want truly engineering grade. Now you're talking, you know, think, you know, um, Stratasys $20,000 printer. So why does this matter? Well, the guidance system is what guides your access. It controls where the access goes and the path that it's allowed to travel upon. The motion system is what moves it. Okay, so think of the road as the guidance system and the car as the motion system. On a printer, those are coupled. What that means is they are linked together. So a better analogy would be a train on a train track because the train is coupled to the track. You can't move off the track, you can't deviate. Now, if you know anything about trains, you'll know they go to great lengths to keep those tracks straight, smooth, and clean because the coupling between the train and the tracks is hard. So any deviation between the two is gonna give you a rough ride, could even derail the train. On a 3D printer, we get artifacts because you have two separate systems coupling together. You can get a force vector, a transfer of force from one component to another and a vector is a combination of those two forces. Now, your guidance system wants your printer component, your axis, to move in a straight line on that system. So you want the axis to move in a straight line on this system. But when you place two systems next to each other, so think of this as the lead screw and this as the rail, well, what happens when those are not aligned, okay? When those are twisted away from each other or this piece here is warped well now this part is going to attempt to apply a force to this part and the combination of those two forces is a vector so if this is telling it to go in a straight line this way and this is telling it to do that because it's warped the midpoint based on how much force for each is going to be somewhere in the middle now because the guidance system is very very rigid it's not going to be able to apply much of a force, um, no matter how strong it is. But if you've ever seen a printer with banding on the Z-axis, where it's not a 
where you print something and you don't get that smooth layer to layer transition but instead it um, appears sometimes it can be pretty bad sometimes it can actually waver in and out and get really really nasty and you don't want that what is that time there it is three and a half minutes um, <laughs> it's white on white so I couldn't see it so from an engineering perspective your solution is to make sure that these two parts I think the word miked out um, to you want to make sure these are installed and ground to within a certain precision level so that means this has to be centered on the guidance system that's this direction here this can't have any warps this can't have any warps because otherwise these components are going to push and pull on each other okay and then you also have the issue of um, distortion so if this is tilted off axis on the y axis or tilted off axis on the z axis uh, the x axis the most common issue is where they're like this and the you do you have what basically you can see it right there see how it gets closer as I get to the top but usually it's the opposite usually it's like this so it's actually closer at the bottom and further at the top which means as your z-axis goes down the gap between these gets smaller and it's getting tighter and tighter and tighter and harder and harder for your stepper motor to make that component move because this is rigid and this is rigid so they're not really going to bend <laughs> so it's basically forcing these components together as they get closer and closer and the drag the amount of force it's like if 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 i am perfectly aligned it's like me gliding across this surface well now don't be aligned and start pushing on it and start pushing on it and start pushing on it and it becomes harder and harder if you just slide your finger okay it'd be better if you use this side because eventually you can actually stop your finger where i can't move my finger anymore because i'm pushing so hard that's what happens with your stepper motors so a lot of times you'll see people take a little piece of metal or a 3d printed piece plastic piece and they will think of this as the stepper motor they will um, shim out the stepper motor space it out so that these two rods are parallel and that will relieve a lot of your stress you can actually usually especially with a cantilevered printer like this you can usually feel it raise the z-axis all the way up and now take turn the printer off now don't go too fast because you'll sometimes back feed electricity into the system take your fingers and very gently start rolling that coupler on the stepper motor for the z-axis make this make the axis come down you want to grab it very lightly and just like turn turn like this very slowly do that all the way down if you have any kind of z-axis banding you'll feel it you'll be turning and then you'll realize wait a minute it's taking a little more force for me to turn this and then you'll get to a certain point where that force goes away and it goes back to normal and then the force comes back that's an intermittent um, force vector. I'll explain that in a moment. But you can actually feel it. And then if you have the um, shimmed out where it's not, it needs to be shimmed, um, you'll feel that too. As the axis gets lower and lower, it'll get harder and harder for you to turn that because there's a brass bushing that I pointed to on there. That brass bushing is what the lead screw turns inside. Think of it like a screw, like a nut. Okay. And as you apply more and more off axis force to those components, it's going to apply more force. You're going to be forcing that lead screw against that brass bushing and increase friction. And your, your fingers are capable of feeling that. If you sit there and you turn it lightly and you just lightly turn that stepper down, you'll actually feel the resistance as it changes. On this particular printer, I had a Z-banding issue. It was a minor issue, but it was causing a little ugliness in the prints. Can I show it to you? Um, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but you can see how, see how that print's a little bit ugly? See all those marks where the, uh, the layers are not lined up anymore? Well, after I adjusted that coupler, I printed it again. And as you can see, now all those marks are gone. Exact same G-code. I did not change the G-code. I did not re-slice this. All I did was reprint it after I got rid of that that um, force vector shift because the um, the bushing inside here this bushing was tight and out of place so it was applying force to the lead screw because the lead screw is not perfectly straight they're almost never perfectly straight so the solution was to loosen those two screws that hold that bushing in place 
run the axis up and down to let this find its center. And then snug them. Don't tighten them, just snug them. And what you're doing is you're evening out the force vector, you're averaging it. So if, it's, if this is your bushing and this is tending to push this way, well, let the bushing move over a little bit. And now it more evenly pushes on both sides. And as long as the bend in your rod is not too great, that's enough. You'll get, it'll be even. The force vector will be even and you won't have that lean or push to one side. The same thing with adding the shim down here. The stepper motor was too close. So I actually took a piece of the wrench, you can see it right there. I took a piece of the wrench and put it behind that block, which basically takes the stepper motor and pushes it out away from the rail a little bit. Because they had the connection point where the bushing attached and where the stepper motor attached were not in line. So the rod was trying to do this. And all I did was push that stepper motor out so that now it's parallel. No more Z-banding. Okay. The, <coughs> the reason you don't want that coupling between the motion system and the guidance system is because you're never going to engineer these machines to be consistently perfect every time you make them. It's just not going to happen. Not at this price range. Not mass produced for $200, $500, $1,000 a piece. You're just not going to get that kind of engineering quality control consistently on every one you make. Then you also have assembly issues if the person doesn't put it together quite perfectly. Okay? That's why the bearing capture on the top of a CR-10, that little block on the top that the lead screw goes through, that's why it has play. Okay? The, if, you, if you grab the rod on top of your CR-10 and move it, you'll see that, it, that it's inside that little capture, but it moves. It has wiggle room. So that the slight imperfections of that rod not being absolutely straight and not being absolutely perfectly aligned with the guidance system to the 0 .0001 millimeter, which is probably how close you'd have to have it in order to rigidly couple them. Um, because when you're drawing 0.2 millimeter layers with a 0.1 millimeter accuracy, it doesn't take much deviation for your eyeball to be able to see it. That's one of the reasons why an Ender 2 makes such clean prints because that deviation is very small and you can see that deviation. You can see it right here between these two prints. Look how nasty and sloppy that one is versus how nice and clean that one is. It's a pretty big difference. That's why you don't want to couple them. Now why don't you have this problem on the X and Y axis? Well because they're soft coupled. The motion system is a rubber belt. So if the rubber belt deviates or pushes, it's just going to deflect. It's not going to transfer that force to your axis in any kind of meaningful manner. So your guidance system remains dominant. But that's also why you don't want to over tighten your belts and why you can't have loose belts because then you have slippage. But that's why the Z axis is the only one that really has that banding problem. And it's because the Z axis has a rigid coupling between the motion system and the guidance system because the z-axis is a lead screw instead of a belt. That's the reasoning between the hard and soft coupling, why you have z-banding, how you can diagnose it, and how you can fix it. If you have any questions, ask down below. I love answering my victims' questions.